In Apex, both inputs have their own strengths and weaknesses. And understanding what they are and how to make your input work for you is important in finding success. What's up guys, it's your boy Valued and today we're gonna be taking a look at 10 big controller tips that will help you dominate even when playing against M and K players. Controller has a lot going for it, but you need to make sure you fully understand where those strengths lie and get the most out of them. The first big tip is the best place to start because it has a major impact on everything you do in game and that is your controller settings. From dead zones and sensitivity to your button layout and everything in between, having your ALC settings dialed in and feeling comfortable on these settings is the first step to finding success on controller. These settings are the guide for what you're able to do in game. If you have too low of a sense, you might find yourself having a hard time tracking enemies or pulling off advanced movement. Too fast and you might miss a ton of shots, overcorrecting in hectic situations. Even things that are seen as small changes like bumping up your cursor speed can help you pull off game-changing plays like a quick armor swap. M&K has a lot of advantages over controller when it comes to movement and looting, but a lot of this is due to controller players not having their settings right or not being comfortable with their specific settings. I'm not gonna be able to take the time to dive into the details of the controller settings today because we have a lot of other tips to talk about. But if you are looking for the specifics, we actually made a whole video about the best ALC settings for season 11. Make sure to check it out. With settings out of the way, let's move on to one of the biggest aspects of winning close range gunfights on controller, crosshair placement. With a joystick, you really don't wanna be whipping your aim all over the place constantly. Players on a mouse have a lot more speed and precision with their aim, allowing them to quickly snap onto targets that might surprise them. While you definitely can do this with a controller, it's much better to get in the habit of always placing your crosshair where you expect your enemies to be. From rounding the corner of a building to crossing a field and staying centered on some high ground you know enemies are holding, keeping your crosshair trained where you most expect enemies to be is really important on controller. This keeps you from needing to make those large movements with your aim, which take valuable time away from your normal time to kill. If someone rounds a corner on you with their crosshair placed right on you and you're looking to the side, they're gonna hit a couple of valuable shots before you even begin to deal damage. You may be asking yourself, but how do I know where my crosser should be placed? Well, there's no easy answer to this because it all comes from your own game sense and the specific conditions of the game. Controller players really need to make sure they have a firm understanding of nearby enemy locations at all times. Don't get me wrong, everybody should put a focus on this, but it's even more important when you're playing on the sticks. To have the best crosshair placement at all times, you're gonna need to be predicting where enemies will be. From audio cues like shots or footsteps to team communication or just a gut feeling that you're being pushed, it's important that you're always ready for an enemy to challenge you rather than relying on your reaction times. This habit of tracking enemy movement and then using that info to have good crosshair placement will have you winning so many more fights. And guys, if you've heard these tips before and you're struggling with implementing them into your own play, game in and game out, then ProGuides.com has got you covered. There, you can find some of the best players in the game, trained and ready to help you improve on fundamentals like these or anything that you need to improve on. From bot reviews to in-game coaching, there are a ton of options to help catapult you forward in rank and skill. So make sure to check it out in the description below. Controller excels in tracking enemies effectively due to the use of the joystick and the addition of aim assist. What we've talked about so far sets you up to get the most out of these strengths. You don't wanna be snapping all over the place, changing targets constantly. Controller really excels at locking down one enemy and zapping them with clean shots. Between aim assist and your ability to make good tracking adjustments on moving players, you can get a lot of work done if you're well positioned and have fast target acquisition. And close range is where this is really apparent, as this is where aim assist and the joystick aiming is the strongest. We'll talk about some ways you can make your long range fighting just as accurate as close range, but whether you're hip firing or ADSing with a 1x, you can have insanely accurate shots up close if you use aim assist properly. On the flip side though, as you guys know, aim assist can be a bit fickle at times. 
If you're getting challenged by more than one person, especially up close, you might notice your aim assist wanting to pull towards enemies that you might not want to be targeting first, often throwing your aim all out of whack. These types of issues are definitely most prominent in close range and really don't come into play unless you have multiple enemies in your line of sight, but it should be considered nonetheless. Understanding how aim assist may interact in a certain situation and playing around this is important to being a good controller player. Using this scenario as an example, if you're going to be close range with two people at the same time, which you should try to avoid as much as possible, it might be better to hit fire. Even if you have a PK or a weapon that might benefit from a quick ADS, the seemingly more precise option might not be the best one. Aiming down sights here actually makes for a harder shot if you're trying to target a specific enemy. And if you want to make the most out of your aim assist at every range, make sure you're equipping your weapon for the job. If you're going to be taking long range fights with your weapon, it's very important that you have a sight that allows you to get a nice zoom on the enemy. This is because aim assist won't actually kick in a lot of the time if you're not properly magnified on the enemy. While you can totally make a 1x or a 2x work, trust me when I say you're not doing yourself any favors at long range with these sights. Aim assist is there to help you in instances where you may be limited by your input. Most of the weaknesses of controllers is definitely aiming at really long ranges, so make sure you're setting yourself up for success with the correct sight. Oh yeah, and make sure you guys know which weapons are powerful for your input. As we've talked about already, controllers are exceptionally good at close range and tracking. This leaves an obvious class of weapons that are their specialty, SMGs. While you don't want to ignore how strong shotties are right now or the other options in the meta, controllers can make a lot of SMGs work better than their M&K friends. Guns like the Prowler and the Car SMG are really strong on the sticks, with the strong tracking of controllers really shining here. Where M&K excels at flick aiming with guns like the PK, controllers definitely have them beat in close range tracking. Playing to strengths like this and understanding these are strong options that don't apply to every player can help you get a bit more of an edge in your game. Now, when it comes to movement, the keyword for controller players is deliberate. This is one of the best tips I can give, as all too often I see controller players flustered about not being able to do all the crazy movements that they see MK streamers pulling off. But the thing is, you actually don't need to be doing all this stuff, at least not at the same time. You could pull off every advanced movement in the game on controller the same way you can on MK, except for tap strafing. What you might struggle with is doing a ton of advanced movement back to back. But the thing is, you really don't ever need to do more movement than the controller lets you do. Most of the time, a solid slide jump, b-hop, or wall bounce are plenty on their own to outplay your opponents. If you try to do it all, your aim and positioning is gonna suffer, and you just won't win as many fights. Keep your movement deliberate and make sure all your movement has a purpose. Think about what you're gonna do and make sure it's actually helping you in your current situation whether that's getting away to safety or challenging someone inside of a doorway. We touched on movement taking away from your positioning in this last tip, and that's because positioning is so important for controller players. Your strength is hitting shots on this input, but you can't do that if you're not in good positions to do damage. Finding good lines of sight and playing your life is a great idea in general in Apex, but finding good lines of sight should be seen as one of the number one priorities for controller players. Finding rooftops or safe positions that are also close enough for you to fully engage a fight are the way to go. You should make enemies come and clear you, looking to have good position in fights that force them to do that. You would much rather some MK warrior or strong controller player have to push you, giving you the time to implement the crosshair placement and close range fighting tips that we already discussed. Make them come clear you out and it will put you in the best position to find success on your input. And I don't mean play passively. The key here is just that you're not getting caught in movement or by surprise. You want to make sure you're fully prepared for the gunfights you're going to take, because those quick micro adjustments are not where your strength lies. And to round us off, a quick tip about inventory management. Make sure you have the heals and nades you think you'll need selected. This might seem simple, but you really want to make sure you don't have to access your wheels for these any more than you have to. 
Having shield cells ready to go in a long range fight where you're sustaining yourself or having a frag selected so you can get it off as soon as possible can really make the difference in a fight. Just like every other aspect of your game, thinking ahead about heals and grenades can help you come out on top against other players who may take the time to pull up their wheel or have hotkeys bound for quick use of these items. Controller is a really strong input, but you've got to make sure you play to its strengths and cover its weaknesses. If you use the tips that I discussed today to improve how you approach the game, I know you will become a much better controller player in every lobby and be making MK players wish they didn't load in with you. Make sure to hit that sub button if you guys enjoyed today's video. We have everything you need to know to finish out season 11 strong and get you ready for season 12. As always guys, it's been your boy Valued and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.